Hi friends, this week I wanted to share with you how to paint this pretty simple rock that I think um, looks pretty cool. I don't know what I did with the reference photo. I don't think I saved it. I just had it up on my phone. So I will show you it again at the end once it's completed. Um, I do recommend using reference photos as much as possible, even if you're not going to copy exactly. I very rarely ever copy anything exactly, but I use those references a lot just to get an idea of how more or less to make something look convincing and realistic. So first thing, I am setting up my palette by um, wetting all my paints. This is the Magello 18 Well palette that you have seen in previous videos. I like it a lot. One thing I don't like about it though is that once those colors are laid down, you can't really rearrange until that color is out or it's empty. So um, I also don't like to travel with this one because sometimes the paint will break out of those little spots. Anyways, it's a great palette regardless. Um, first thing I'm doing once those paints are ready is to go ahead and wet in the entire area of my rock. Now I have a light sketch on here that you can see. Um, the rock that I'm painting has a ton of layers and so that sketch really just helps to keep the form in mind and know where I should be aiming some of those shadows to help define those layers later. So I'm starting by wetting the entire area with a very light wash of color. The colors I am using are indigo and some raw, oh, excuse me, some burnt umber and some Van Dyke brown. The colors that you choose to use, I don't think are super important. Pick colors that you like. Um, I think the key to this is actually some color variance, not always using the exact same shade. I don't like to use in most situations the colors exactly as they are straight out of tube or pan I like to mix a little bit and that's why you see that my palette is kind of a mess I don't clean it in between uses unless I have a specific reason I like to keep certain colors on various areas so that I can get those minute color variances and um, something a little bit more customized I just think it makes things look a lot more realistic. Light bounces colors around a lot, so you very rarely, you very rarely see like a single color or an item that is like one single color all the way through. Light is bouncing around and colors are reflecting and it just makes a much more deeper complex image. So now I'm going in with um, some more concentrated color and laying down some shadowy bits and some of those layer breaks. And watercolor tends to dry a lot lighter than what you start off with but for this rock um, I really want to take it slow and build up those dark layers layer by layer. Watercolor is wonderful and transparent and lets you do this kind of slowly which I think results in a much better end. I'm just defining with my brush and some of that darker color a little bit more of those cracks and layers I'm getting some violet mixed into here that is on the palette and I am absolutely okay with that that violet adds a little bit of a cool touch to my shadow areas and I think it really works I've swapped to a smaller brush, and this is the Velvet Touch Long Number no. 2 round. Um, I'm using the small brush because since it holds so much less water, it's really great for finer details. The brush I was using prior to this was the Velvet Touch Long Round Number no. 8. These two are some of my favorites when working on smallish sizes, anything like 8x10 and smaller, I tend to use these brushes a lot. I'm not sponsored by them, they're just my current favorites. They are holding up quite well and I like the points that it comes down to. So now everything is dry and I just am going back in with some clean water and the long round eight to just wet the entire thing. 
One of the things you have to keep in mind when working with watercolor is to know when to work wet into wet and when to work wet into dry. I don't want hard edges for this next step. I want to have some dispersion of color, so that's why I wet the entire thing. I'm taking some more of that indigo color and just laying it down in some of my shadow areas. I'm not looking for hard lines, just more soft shadowy areas. And I'm adding some Van Dyke Brown to my indigo colors to make kind of a warm-ish black. And the paint has had a chance to dry on the paper, so now I'm going in with some finer details again with the long round number two. Comes to a nice sharp point and holds that water really nicely without dispersing too much so it makes it great for details. Defining my layers and cracks and I absolutely do recommend moving your picture around as much as you need to. You can see I'm, I rotated a lot in this video. Usually I try to keep it in one position just for the purpose of recording but when I'm just painting on my own I will turn that any which way I need to to get comfortable strokes. It makes it a lot easier and if you're able to I absolutely recommend rotating as much as necessary. And if you like these kind of videos don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to get notified every week when those new videos come out. Next week we're talking about contracts for artists or freelancers of any sort so it should be a good one hopefully very informative. So same colors, still just working on making some finer cracks and details, deepening some of those dark areas. Watercolor, I feel, is kind of a exercise in patience. You use transparent layers to build up these areas. You can start with darker colors. Um, off the bat but I think that going slowly like this always yields better results it gives you much more control and allows for those more subtle variations in light and shadow um, just is a lot better I think when you're trying to work a little bit more realistically to take it slow and just build and build your layers There's a ton of different styles though. I'm not saying anything is right or wrong as far as how many layers you should use. I'm just letting you know what works for me and how I found success with watercolors. Um, there are different styles that are looser and will work a lot more wet into wet with fewer layers. And those can be beautiful. Um, that's just not what I'm going for here. Now I have left a lot of areas a lot lighter as you can see and this can be done by just not going over every single area with each subsequent layer. I have focused some of the darks in particular areas and built up just in the shadows. You can also use masking fluid. And I also use a white gel pen for some parts just to give a few more little highlights. And here is the finished piece again. If you would like to see the other rocks that were visible around it, you can check out my Patreon. My Patreon is linked down below in the description. I hope that was helpful. Just thought a simple rock for you could show you how to do a different material in watercolor. Thanks for watching guys and happy painting.